<laughs> hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today we've got a Mercedes 4th generation E-Class in the shop. This is the W212 and we want to go over some of the top problems. Let's get started. Okay friends, so you know me, the first thing I like to talk about when I do these videos is a safety issue. The safety issue on this vehicle, at least one that I've come to notice, is a shiftability issue. And when I'm talking about that shiftability issue, I'm talking about generally the gears between one and three when it's shifting up, or if you're shifting between three to one. So if you're at a stop and you go to accelerate, you might notice that the revs go rev, 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 and then shift, and then rev, and then shift and then, you know, the normal rev and then shift like it's supposed to. But usually between the first, second, or even third gear shifting in the upward movement, it's gonna have a harsh shifting issue. Now when you have this shiftability issue and you notice the revs are going up, when it finally does shift into gear, you're probably gonna hear a very loud and audible clunk. Boom, right? That's very scary, nobody wants that. And more than likely, you're gonna try to get off the side of the road and turn off your car. Let's say you finally stop, you know, freaking out a little bit, you start the car, you go to drive down the road, now it's gonna shift fine, 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 for maybe the next couple days, who knows? Maybe even bring it to the dealer and you tell them to try fixing it. They try it, eh, works fine. They call you back, come get it, you go to leave there, shift again, well boo. So now the causes for this would be a failed turbine speed sensor located inside the transmission. Overall, it's not necessarily something that maybe you or me would wanna do in the driveway. So now the fixes for this would be, of course, to tear apart your transmission, replace the turbine speed sensor, and to me, it just doesn't really sound like a fun job. The next thing I wanna talk about is the crankshaft position sensor. That leads us into what the symptoms are. Maybe you're driving down the road and the car just dies out on you. That's no good at all. Maybe you're trying to start it and it just cranks, 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 cranks. And it's not turning over for some reason super annoying. Or maybe even the car starts, but then it sputters and then eventually just dies out. None of that's any fun. And of course you want to figure out what it is. More than likely when this is happening, your check engine light's gonna come on on your dash. When that comes on, you can go ahead and grab your little scanner that you got from 1AAuto.com. This is great by the way. It should communicate with this vehicle. And yes, European vehicles are difficult to communicate with generic um, scanners and stuff. Overall, you should probably get like a European one or something like that, but if you got a couple thousand bucks, go ahead. Otherwise, get this one. But to get to the point, you're probably gonna have a code that says PO336, which is gonna come up saying crankshaft position sensor. There is some other things to remember. This might not be the only cause for this issue. There is a camshaft position sensor that could also be an issue as well. With that said, it's recommended to do them both at the same time. While you're in there, yeah, they're two separate parts, they're two separate prices, and it's probably twice the job but they both tend to go bad internally. And when this happened, it can cause the same issue. For the next shot, I'm gonna jack this up so I can show you what I'm talking about. It's the thrust link in the front. So we're underneath the front of the vehicle and you can see this arm right here. This is called the forward thrust link. And what it does basically is keep the wheel from going forward and backward. So what happens is, is the bushing right inside here gets dry rotted and cracked and even sometimes separates and it causes uneven wear on your tires. You'll probably notice that your tires are wearing on the inner edge. Even though you check your front end side to side, up and down like you normally would, you'll rarely feel this issue. So when you step on the brake or when you accelerate heavily, this is gonna shift back and forth like it's supposed to, it's rubber mounted. But of course, if the bushings are bad inside there, it's gonna shift way too much and it's gonna cause this issue. The fix for this would be of course to either take this out and then you can try to press in a new bushing. That could be a fun job sometimes. Um, and if you don't feel as though you're inclined to do that, I would just take out the bolt that goes through here and then take off that side right there, which is like a little ball joint, pop it right out of there and replace it. And of course, get an alignment. The next thing I wanna talk about is the interior of these things. And when you're spending as much money as we spend on these, you kinda expect them to be something a little nicer. They look pretty and appealing to the eye. Thank you, that's nice. Of course, they do get a little bit of fading over time. That's kind of a down a downside, but I'm not really super worried about that so much as just the sounds that come from literally everything in here. You can just drive around, you hit rocky or bumpy roads, and everything's just kinda creaky and, I don't know, not the best. And then of course, you've got this right here, this cup holder. It just doesn't, retract like it should completely, you know? It's like, okay, a little further. This little knob right here, 
This is fun. You know, you can play your little video game while you're driving up on the dash there. Of course, it's actually for navigation and whatnot. I get that. But it stops working. And usually it'll be intermittent at first, and then of course it'll just stop altogether. And that can be an issue. So what you could do is you can either rebuild it or you could replace it if you can find one, but that's another issue. And then of course there's the other issue, which is right underneath my butt right now. And that would be uh, the dreaded rip seats. And you're gonna find this in pretty much any of these cars. They put a nice seam right across the center for some reason, which is of course right where my butt's gonna be sitting. And it just kinda separates. So that's never any good. If we were gonna talk about fixes for this stuff, I mean, of course, like I said, there was multiple things. If you were talking about the dash and stuff fading, you know, you could maybe try to polish it up with something and try to bring back a little bit of that luster and shine. If you're talking about the creaking coming from places, well, that could be annoying. You could try to shim it with something. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really wanna tell you what I would do to do it, but you could just use your imagination, but I would probably involve a little bit of shimming if I was that worried about it. For this right here, well, you can go ahead and try to replace that. Maybe get an upgraded spring internally there and see if you can get one that'll actually retract fully so you don't have to do the work of it because what's the point at that point? Um, but aside from that, with the seat, you know, I guess maybe get it reupholstered or replaced depending on how much money you got. The next thing I want to talk about is the automatic digital temperature control valve. Yeah, it's located under the hood. Yeah, it's underneath the wiper blade assembly. But the reason why I'm talking about it in here is because here's where the button is. You come over here, you press auto. The vehicle should set the temperature for the inside of the cabin to 77. What you might notice is for some reason there isn't warm temperature coming out of the heat vents. It's basically only coming out cold. Well, why is that? You crank it up a little bit further. 81, 82, 83. Still cold. Well, that's annoying. Let's get under the hood. All right, so if you were to lift up your hood, remove these wiper arms, remove the plastic cowl. Once you're below that stuff, you're gonna see the assembly that has the motor and everything for your wiper blades. Get that right out of there. At that point, you're gonna be able to see the firewall. The firewall is the wall that comes between your engine compartment and the passenger compartment. It's very important. But anyway, on that firewall, you're gonna find the valve. It's gonna have a couple coolant tubes going into it, and it's also gonna have an electrical wire going into it. So now you found the valve. The reason why the valve actually goes bad is because it's a two-piece unit. Yeah, it has some internals, and I'm not gonna include those as pieces because there's multiple, but you have two plastic pieces for the housing unit. In between those two pieces, they have to have a gasket. The gasket goes bad, it's super common. Once that happens, moisture gets inside, of course it's gonna lead to rust and corrosion. Well, you have a little electric motor in there. Obviously, you don't want moisture on the electric motor, that's not gonna be helpful. You have bearings that go along where those gears are for the shafts, makes everything spin. Moisture gets in there, it's not good at all. Well, this is a super common issue. So fixes for this, of course, would be to locate the unit. Once you find the unit, you wanna make sure you test for power and ground. Once you're sure you have power and ground, you can move along. There's gonna be a removal process for this because it does involve coolant, so pay attention to that. Other than that, remove it, take apart the two housings and take a peek inside. When you look inside, if you see any rust or corrosion in there, odds are it's pretty much wasted. You'd wanna just replace it. Okay, friends, so that was some of the top issues that we found with this vehicle. If you have one of them, I'm sure you've got a whole bunch of issues that you'd probably like to add in the comment box below, and I'd love it. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and smash on that like button and subscribe, ring the bell, that way there you'll be kept up with all of our latest content. Before I let you go, take a look at this right here. That is a big issue right there. I wouldn't say safety, but a definite annoyance. And a fix for that would be, you just gotta stand here and lean on it. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.